Hello and welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to show you how to take a raw data like this exported sales data right here and put it into AI and use natural language queries to go through it to get interactive charts all within the AI, all within ChatGPT, and then also to get actionable insights from that data. So we are going to upload our original raw unprocessed data and use regular simple queries like this to get something good from that data. I'm going to show you specifically five simple prompts to help you go through it. And then more important than that, go through this entire page to show you the system that we use, the way of thinking that we can use to actually get useful information from our data. So there will be a couple follow up prompts in there as well. And I'm going to show you a few things to watch out for. So more than anything, it's not just five prompts. It's a way to go through your data to get something useful from it. And this does not require you to have Microsoft Excel or any advanced analytic software. The point is to make your life easy. And I will provide the raw data for download as well as all the prompts that are used in this tutorial on teachexcel.com. I'll put a link to them below this video. So you can click that link. Once you create a free account, you can then download the files. While you're there, make sure to check out our courses. We have Excel courses and soon AI courses. There's so much to learn with AI. It's a very exciting time. So now let me show you what we are going to be doing. I am back here on the raw data, just so you can see what we have. It is a simple CSV file. This is how a lot of data is exported from things like point of sale systems, POS systems, and many, many more things. So each column is separated with a comma. And if we open the data in Microsoft Excel and turn it into a table, we will see it like this. Now you could do a lot of analysis here. I'd probably turn it into a pivot table, add some charts, add some helper columns. Those of you that have watched my tutorials know how amazing helper columns can be. And if you haven't watched those tutorials, definitely look them up and watch them. It's amazing the analysis you can do with that. But that requires so much effort and a bit of technical knowledge. So that's why we're not going to go the Microsoft Excel route for this tutorial. We'll stick with the raw data, go here, and let's begin. I'm going to input the very first prompt, and then we are going to go through the previous prompts that I've already input because that's a little bit easier to run through. So the very first thing that I'm going to do here is tell it what it is and what it's going to be doing. You are an expert at analyzing sales and retail trends from data that is uploaded to you, including from a POS system. Maybe you want to put a point of sale. Maybe you want to put the exact brand. Maybe you want to put the file type. You can make your prompts magnificently specific and huge as long as you format it in a logical way. But this one doesn't need to be that big. The next line, I will upload a file here to analyze and then shortly ask questions about it. You must fully analyze this file in order to answer each question. The file format is CSV. Do you understand? All right, and now let's grab our CSV file and run it. It's going to give you a preview of the CSV file here, depending on how many rows you have. Then this side is what you've input, and down here is the response. I love it. Yes, I understand. Go ahead with your first question. Now I'm going to skip to the version of this that I have already input everything into because it changes a little bit and I want to make sure I cover everything that I want to say. There are a few very specific examples. You'll notice here that every time you run it, it's going to say something a little bit different. So here it's go ahead and ask your first question whenever you're ready. Now let's go with the first prompt. Analyze this sales data and show the top five best selling products by quantity sold and revenue. Also summarize which product categories performed best. Remember, make it as specific as you need to make it as long as you need to make it so long as it is structured well. Here, I just want to show you that it doesn't actually have to be that complex in order to get some useful information. So here we have a nice little table. We could download this as well. If you click that button right there, we've got category quantity and total price. Then below it, the top five best selling products by units and by revenue, as well as some more information right here. 
If you don't tell it specifically every little thing that it should return, and if you don't limit it to only returning that, it will also come up with some additional things that it thinks you might want to know. Sometimes it can come up with something you didn't think about, and it can be quite nice. What I would do from this is maybe I would look at this table right here, and I would say, okay, we've got tools. That's a category. 1,049. But I want to know exactly what tools were performing best. Was it one specific tool? Was it one large customer that bought most of the tools for one big job? So maybe that's not going to be representative of the average amount of tools that we sell every single month, or in this case, every two weeks. Then I would input that down here. Tell me more about the tools category. What was sold, when it was sold, how many different buyers there were, average basket price. Those are the kind of follow-up questions you could ask. And if it doesn't represent your data in a table like this, but you'd like it to, make sure that you say that in the prompt up here. For me, it's working just fine with ChatGPT 4.0. So now uh, let us go down here to the next prompt. It's time to get a little bit visual. Based on the timestamps, what are the busiest hours of the day for sales? Show me a bar chart of sales volume by hour from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Going back to Excel, you'll notice we have a timestamp column. So everything that I reference is a data point in the original data. And here we go, a bar chart. How great is that? By default, it's not going to be interactive. It'll be like this, but we can click this little guy right here and make it interactive. <laughs> in a year, we might not even ever need Microsoft Excel again. Once again, you can download it. Here you can change the colors that are used for it. It's really quite amazing. Let me pull that down. For this one, I'd like a follow-up. My follow-up, summarize it and give me some possible reasons for why it might be more busy at certain times. Little misspelling there, but that's okay. It goes through sales volume by hour and we have peak hours, we have slow hours, then we have possible reasons for busy periods. This is very interesting. So from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., we've got a little surge and it says contractor behavior and DIY shoppers. Many contractors and professionals start their workday early and stop by the store mid morning to pick up materials once they've assessed job site needs. Then casual shoppers and DIYers may come in after dropping off kids or running errands. Now, was any of that in our data? Did any of it say contractor sales or individual person buying stuff for their house after they have dropped their kids off? <laughs> no, it didn't say that at all. So the AI is using all the information it has to guess. Maybe this is a good guess. Maybe this is not a very good guess. I mean, it says possible reasons. So the more information that you can feed it, the better the results will be. And maybe this is where you'd like to open up Excel and add some helper columns. Maybe there's a way that you can tell that a purchase was made under a corporate account. And maybe corporate account purchases are all going to be contractors. The more information, the more metadata that you can add to each one of the purchases, the better insights you can gain from it. Maybe these guesses are gonna be really helpful for you. Maybe they're going to be misleading. It's really difficult to tell, and that's why you need to try this out for yourself with your situation and your data. See how helpful it can be for you. Now let's go on to the next prompt. Find the five lowest performing products by revenue and quantity sold. Which ones might be underperforming and worth reviewing for discounting or discontinuation? What I like about this here is we have a little note. So actually, first here we have how many units were sold, and then we have by revenue, then a little bit more down here. But the note is very interesting. We did not ask for a note, but it says, these are the bottom five, but quantities are still relatively high. None are complete outliers. That's not even something I thought to put in the prompt, but maybe I'd like to adjust this prompt so the next time that I use it, I add that there. Like, hey, if they're all pretty much selling at about the same level, if nothing is really that bad, then maybe tell me that. Except for don't use the word maybe. 
I'm talking to you conversationally, but you don't want to use the word maybe when you're talking to AI. And as we go down, we get a nice little list of underperformers worth reviewing and the icons. I love the little icons. Let's read the one for a circular saw. It ranks low in quantity, but high in revenue. Likely a high ticket item with niche buyers, not necessarily underperforming, but just slower moving by nature. So when you're building up your metadata, maybe you want to have one worksheet that lists all of the categories or all of the items, and each one has a note with it. Maybe for a circular saw, you have a note that says, hey, these don't get sold that often, but they're really important to have because when they do get sold, it really brings in a lot of profit, great profit margin for us. You could add that to a file and then upload it here when you're performing the analysis. So that way it doesn't exactly have to guess here. It has a lot more information from which it can give you a much stronger opinion and reason for why something has happened. Now, prompt four. Calculate the total revenue from all sales in this spreadsheet. It's actually a CSV, but that's okay. Then show me the average number of items sold and the average revenue per day. Identify any trends and potential reasons for that. Include analysis of weekends and holidays. Very important for the results it's about to give us. We have a nice summary here. We can download it here, but let's take a look over here. We have a weekday, is weekend, and is holiday. Notice, holiday, everything is false. We start over here on the 10th, July 10th, all the way down to July 23rd, 14 days. But what do we have down here? Trends and analysis, holiday, July 4th, flagged specifically. Why are you mentioning July 4th? It's not in our data. <laughs> So AI probably just saw July and July 4th is a big holiday in the U S and that's where I'm messaging it from right now. So it said, I should mention something about July 4th. So that leads me to believe there might be some other issues with the results from this particular query. Remember it is AI. It is never going to always get everything correct. So let's be careful with what it's going to return us here. That doesn't mean that it got any of the insights incorrect. Just maybe this analysis for this query is not going to be so great. And that's all I wanted to cover for those results. So let's move on to the fifth and final prompt. Give me a simple weekly report of my sales data. Include total sales, top products, slow movers, and any patterns or suggestions you notice in the data. We have it broken up by week number, total items, and total revenue and everything is broken out in a nice, neat little way. Here, the notes are quite nice. So I might change this prompt in the future, depending on what I need to say, hey, I want you to give me more from the notes section. Analyze the data a bit more thoroughly. But when we're looking through it, what I might do as well is go to week 30, notice circular saw, 58 units, and wonder why it's 58 there, but 164 in the week before. So my follow-up in this case, here we have some suggestions as well. My follow-up query, are there any patterns for when the circular saw sales take place? Plot their sales in a chart with quantity over time of day the sales occurred. Now I'd probably like another chart that plots it over the days of the week. And then I want a list of any holidays and I want a list of any reason that any particular day could have an abnormal level of sales, high or low. So this is just the most very basic follow-up prompt, and it gives us a nice little chart like this that we can also make interactive. Then we get observations and interpretation. And uh, that's the end of this, but we could go on forever and ever and ever. Remember, you can download the prompts that you saw here, and you can download the raw data from teachxl.com. I'll put a link to it below the video. It's completely free. You do have to sign up, but it's free. Then you can download the files. Now, what I want you to understand from this tutorial is that this is a conversation, and that's the beauty of AI, is that you can have a conversation. Anybody can do what I did here. You do not have to learn all the ins and outs of 
pivot tables and the raw data and refreshing the data and doing this and doing that and adding columns and summing the rows and taking off the totals, you don't have to worry about that. You can talk to this like you would talk to your slightly inept intern. And if we were to connect through our phone, we wouldn't even have to be sitting in front of a computer. We could talk to ChatGPT and then have an actual conversation with it and say, hey, why are the circular saws not selling so much this week? And it says, well, I don't know why it's not selling much this week, but the previous week, this happened and this happened and this happened. And then you can say, okay, hey, are there any big building projects in my city? What happened then? Let's identify a pattern. Let's identify a reason for why there was a potential spike right here. And then it just dropped down here. I need to figure out what's normal so I can figure out what's going on so I can stay in business. And that's what I really like about using AI for this because the conversation kind of makes it easier. You can think out loud. You can ask for suggestions. Hey, am I missing something? Should I have been analyzing a different data point? What are other people looking at? There's so much data online about how you can analyze your sales and do this and that, that AI might have some really good suggestions for you. So for everyone out there, especially you small businesses, I love you small businesses. I do so much work for you guys. I love you so much. You're really the backbone of every society. Try out AI. Please, please, please try it out. But I have found that it is almost always able to give you actionable insights that can help you. That's enough of me talking for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please subscribe, hit the bell icon and give us a thumbs up and share this tutorial with anyone who you think might like it. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.